Genesis chapter 49, verse 29. And he charged them, and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite. Notes, the heart of the patriarch was not set upon the wealth of his luxurious, luxurious bedchamber, but was far away in God's chosen land. We as well must ever remember that while we are in the world, we must not be of the world. Our treasures have to be somewhere else, in other words. Verse 30. In the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite for a possession of a burying place. Uh, notes, the great patriarch never allowed all the splendor of Egypt and its ease to turn his faith from its correct object, uh, object. It was ever in Christ and the cross. And on a side note, if I remember correctly, Machpelah, I think I said it before, but I think Machpelah actually means field of blood. You can read a little bit more about what happened to Judas in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, if memory serves me correctly, and I believe it does. Verse 31. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Lee. Notes, his demand that he be buried where Abraham and Isaac were buried proclaimed within itself and made a statement that all of these were staking a claim to the entirety of the land. God had promised it to them, and ultimately that promise would be realized. Verse 32, the purchase of the field and the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. Verse 33, and we're getting to a little bit of a sad note here. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed, and he yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. Notes. The last hours of this great patriarch were filled with prophecies and predictions concerning the twelve tribes of Israel, which would ultimately bring the Redeemer into the world. He died with that prophecy what he died when that prophecy was uttered. But he did not die until it was uttered. It must be said of Jacob that he kept the faith that was once delivered unto Abraham and his father Isaac. He had not allowed that torch to fall to the ground or even be dimmed. At his death, it burned brightly and in fact, brighter than ever. We are now in the final chapter of the book of Genesis, chapter 50. We're going to speak on the burial of Jacob. And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. Notes. Joseph closed his father's eyes as predicted by the Lord to Jacob. That's in uh, chapter 46, verse 4. Verse 1 is a picture of Christ weeping over Israel. Jacob was dead physically and yet alive spiritually. Israel was alive physically and dead spiritually. Verse 2. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father, and the physicians embalmed Israel. Ah, notes. And Jacob's body was embalmed, but his soul and spirit went into paradise, uh, there to be with his grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac and every other believer who had lived up until that time. Verse 3. And forty days were fulfilled for him, for so are fulfilled the days of, which, of those which are embalmed. Notes. Basically, this is saying this is the length of time it took for the process to be completed. Uh, scripture. And the, Egyptian, and the Egyptians mourned for him seventy days. Notes. Death is an enemy. <laughs> Very obviously. It is the last enemy which will be defeated. That's in Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. Jesus took the sting out of death at the cross, but at the end of the kingdom age, death will then be totally defeated and forever. That's in Revelation chapter 20. Kind of reminds me of a Petra song that I heard. Where is the sting? Tell me. Where is the fight? I believe the song is called The Grave Robber. You ought to go look it up. It's a really nice song. Verse 4. 
And when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spoke unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying. Notes. The fact that Joseph did not speak personally to Pharaoh accords with discoveries which show that mourners at that time did not shave and therefore could not enter into the royal presence. Verse 5. My father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die. In my grave which I have dug for me in the land of Canaan, there shall you bury me. Now therefore let me go up, I pray you, and bury my father, and I will come again. Notes. As stated... Uh, uh, pardon me as stated Joseph was speaking to Pharaoh through members of the royal court verse 6 and Pharaoh said go up and bury your father according as he has made you swear and Joseph went up to bury his father and with him went went up all the servants of Pharaoh the elders of his house and all the elders of the land of Egypt notes The grandeur of Jacob's funeral procession must have been a wonder to behold. It is amazing to think of this great patriarch, a pilgrim all his life, being carried to his final resting place by the grandeur of mighty Egypt. It is one of the few times in history that the world recognized the greatness that was among them. Verse 8 And all the house of Joseph and his brethren and his father's house Only their little ones and their flocks and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan. And there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation, and he made a mourning for his father seven days. Uh, Notes. They were now in the land of Canaan seven being God's perfect number. As such, it speaks of a perfect, a perfection of salvation which will ultimately lead to the resurrection. Verse 11, And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians. Wherefore the name of it was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond Jordan. Notes, the Canaanites had no understanding of what Joseph was doing, thinking this was some type of ritual concerning the Egyptians. Verse 12, And his sons, who were Jacob's, did unto him according as he commanded them. Verse 13, For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan, and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with the with the field for a possession for a burying place of Ephron the Hittite before Mamre. Notes, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very wealthy in flocks, gold and silver. However, when they died, as all, the only thing they took with them was their faith. Verse 14, And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brothers, and all who went up with him to bury his father, and he had buried his father. Verse 15, And when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will preadventure hate us and will certainly requite us, requite us all the evil which we did unto him. Notes, Joseph's brothers never did quite understand who their brother was or what he was. Now that Jacob was dead, they expected Joseph to turn on him. They they did not and even perhaps could not understand that Joseph, being a type of Christ, would deal with them not with judgment but with mercy and grace. Verse 16, And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Your father did command before he died, saying, Notes, They claimed that Jacob had said before he died that they should ask Joseph to forgive them of their great sin against him. We'll have to pick up in the final uh, Genesis chapter 50, verse 17. Thank you for your time.